Welcome to the John Freakin' Muir Pod. Lace up those boots and sling on the pack for a romp through trails, short and long. With your host and renaissance man, Doc, it's time to embrace the suck. Welcome back to another week on the trail. I'm Doc, and this is the John Freakin' Muir Pod. Let's start off with a reminder. If you are enjoying the podcast, take just a minute to help us out. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're not enjoying the pod, well, just go ahead and keep that to yourself. All right, let's get to this week's guest. Today, we are talking to Triple Crowner, Rue McKenrick, about his incredible project, the American Perimeter Trail. Welcome to the John Freakin' Muir Pod, Rue. How's it going? Hey, thank you so very much for having me here. Good to see you, Doc. You too. Thank you. Now, I imagine uh, the fact that you are a Triple Crowner, that somewhere along the way on the trail, you have picked up a trail name because we go by trail names here on the podcast. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I started backpacking a little bit over 20 years ago. Um, I got some trail names during that time, but um I mean, I've had a bunch of trail names. Okay. Is there but, one that is there but, one that is stuck or are you partial to one or should we stick with Rue? No, I mean, basically like what happened is like torn in some different areas, um, especially where there were places where there were no backpackers or hikers. If you would meet a backpacker, it wasn't important to know their name. It was more important to know their real name mm-hmm. because if something happened, then you want to be able to say Rue McKenrick or you want to be able to say Bob Miller or something like that, you know? So I just, I mean, yeah, I've had trail names, but I, you know, it's like, um, I think it's like a really fun tradition. I think it's really great. Um, but when it comes to like people really out in the back country and there's no one around, it might be better to know, to know your real name. And that's just my opinion. I mean, I don't really know. I think I, 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 I love the trail name thing, but it's just like, I don't know, if it comes to search and rescue, my family, it might be, better to know Rue McKenrick than cheesy Cheesy. or whatever you know what I mean got it like it's just that's the way it's kind of worked out okay um, so for the sake of of this episode then I shall refer refer to you as Rue then mm -hmm. is that what you're saying we'll go with (laughs) Rue well that's my name okay (laughs) Yeah. All right. We'll go with Rue. You can call me Doc, which is not uh, not on my driver's license or on my paycheck, but that's that's the trail name. So. Right. Right. Okay. I mean, no one would no one would know me if I told you the trail names. No one would know me here. Do you have if a you favorite? Said, if you if you said real, uh, if you said Rue McKenrick, they might be able to find me. But if you said something else, they. Okay. So. Well, the the name of this episode will appear as Rue McKenrick and okay. the American Perimeter Trail. It won't it won't be cheesy, but so you, don't worry about that. <laughs> we we are not going to bury the lead here. So <laughs> okay. All okay. right. Great. Hey, Rue, have you ever listened to the podcast before? You know, um, so I uh, personally am not real invested into like any kind of media personally not that i don't think it's wrong because i think that it's very valuable um i think like going on different programs or youtube or whatever that that could be really helpful Mm -hmm. i personally just have never owned a television i've never looked at a youtube video 
I, you know, that's me. That's my personal thing, but that doesn't mean that that's right. Because I think if you want to learn about this stuff, um, pretty much anyone that I've like interviewed with, like I've, I'm interviewing with you, I've interviewed with Papa Bear Hikes, like uh, these different um, kind of podcasts and stuff, I think are the best information you get. Um, if you want to go to the other thing that has done interviews with me, like Backpacker Magazine or Outside Magazine or National Geographic or that sort of stuff, I wouldn't really bother if you want to learn about backpacking. So, you know, I, you know, my opinion is if I'm on a podcast or someone is like speaking about what's going on in the backpacking world, you should probably center more around them um, than this other stuff. But I, I really don't know because I just don't consume this sort of stuff. So I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but I, okay. Um, well, Rue, Rue, Rue you are, honest. that's, that's good. That's good. Rue, you are fascinating already. And I only asked the question about the podcast because I want to make sure that you are aware of a segment that we do towards the end of the episode called the pro tip inside of the week. And when we get there, that's where I will turn to you and ask you to share some trail wisdom with our listeners to make their next outdoor experience even better. So don't be surprised when we get there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid of any of this stuff. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's it's fine. Like, This is in your wheelhouse. You got this. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not arrogant. I just, I don't. The thing is, like, I've given up my email address and, like, people to contact me and, I don't charge them money or whatever, but nice people want to ask questions. That's, that's cool. Okay. They don't, that's fine. All right. Hey, we've got uh, a segment we call the current event. And I was, I was perusing through media today and looking for maybe some outdoor stories that I might share as a current event and get your take on it. So (laughs) I found, I I found one just before we, we came on air here. And it is a, it's a news story out of Arizona from KNAU News Talk. And the headline is that crews rescue the same hiker twice in two days on San Francisco peaks. And so what mm-hmm. happened is uh, the Coco, Coco Nino Sheriff's Office reports that a man from New York was rescued twice in two days while hiking the San Francisco peaks in Flagstaff, Arizona. The first time was on Humphreys Trail where he became lost and he was picked up. Eventually. I know it. Yeah, go he ahead. Was picked, he go was ahead. picked up eventually by by officers on a snowcat. And then the second time came the next day on Humphreys Saddle. He was injured and he was helicoptered out, but he refused medical treatment. So uh, what, what what's your initial reaction on, on this poor guy that had to be rescued twice in two days in, in Arizona? You know, Listen, I'm a person who leads with my heart. So my heart says, um, thank you. Thank you, friend. Thank you, universe. Thank you, great um, search and rescue uh-huh. for rescuing this person. So my my heart says that. And um uh, so we just hope that, um, he's okay and that he generates, you know, something specific in this world that is helpful, you know, and he's obviously, um, I, okay. So I'll tell you, let, let's just talk about what I know okay. instead of what I don't know. Um, On the APT, I when I left the um, the Grand Canyon, it was snowing. It was a lot of snow. Uh-huh. I got down to that area that you're talking about. The forecast was, and this is what I had heard, was that there was going to be like three feet of snow coming, but it was like five days out. 
And I walked for like two days and all of a sudden it came in. And I had no idea. I'm like, I thought this was supposed to be a couple days out, whatever. It turned out that there was a storm that was in front of the main storm and it dropped like two feet. I was afraid. I mean, if I'm honest with you, I was afraid. Sure. I was, I was high up uh, around Mount, Mount Humphreys and I was scared. And it just started snowing like all hell. There's no backpackers. There's no hikers up there. It's just me. It just started, I mean, dumping. The view that evening was so beautiful. I'll never forget it. But what came right after that was this front that I didn't understand because it wasn't supposed to be coming for another couple of days. But there was this preliminary front. I knew I was dead. I knew I was dead. I don't know how else to say it. I knew this front was coming in. I saw it from a long period of time away. I started running my ass off with the pack on. I'm in the back country. I'm running to get the hell out of there. I'm dead. I can see it. Then I ran and I ran and I ran. And it snowed and it snowed like all hell. And I run to the point where I get to a pinnacle. And I'm not exactly sure what to do from there. I'm like, it's another 20 miles to try to run down to a road to even hitch into Flagstaff. Get the hell out of here. Serious danger here. I'm running, I'm running. I see something to my left in a complete blizzard. Blowing. I just have a tarp with me at that point. I turn and I look, and there is a four season hit, a like camping like a hunting tent set up there in the middle of nowhere there's no tire tracks there is nothing time to make a new friend i go rolling in there's no people the hunting season started the next week they had come up and set up something and then left because it was going to be back in the next week and I went in there, and that sucker, it blew and ripped all night long. But it saved my life. So fantastic! So you 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 kind of know the situation that this poor guy was in, and uh, you lived to, to to tell the story. You know, the thing is that it's like. You can never speak to what someone's experience is or exactly how that was for them. But you can relate to people as best you can. So this is a situation where I relate and I, I understand. Okay. All right. Hey, another feature we've been doing this season, Rue, is the Must Bring Gear Review sponsored by the Ultralight Backpacking Gear Company Outdoor Vitals. And here's how it works. If you were to let a stranger pack your bag with pretty much generic gear for a multi-day hike, what is the one specific piece of gear you would insist on being packed? And if you've got a particular brand for that specific piece of gear, even better. So Rue, what is your must bring piece of gear? Oh, well, that's easy. I don't know if someone else can pack it for you. I don't know. Maybe they can. But um, the one thing that you have to bring with you is an open heart. An open heart. It's not easy. It hurts like all hell. It hurts like nothing you've ever experienced. Dang, it hurts. 
And I don't know if someone else can pack it for you. But the thing is, everyone has a heart, <laughs> but the open heart piece is difficult. And so if you're able to maintain that kind of apple or like open heart, um, if you can keep that open, it hurts like hell. It's going to want to shut the entire time. But that is the most valuable thing. And your gear and your attraction to this and that and the other thing aren't going to matter. And if you spend a lot of time out there backpacking, you're going to see it. You're going to see people with a close start that are pounding through that's fine with that. You're going to start with an open heart. The open heart is the easier way. And it's indispensable. I wish I could tell you otherwise. I wish I could tell you. We go online or you would be able to see something that you could buy for $335 that would be better than this or change this or whatever, it's not going to happen that way. Open the other people, they're going to spit. And as far as your experience on a rainy day, a rainy day, with gear requires a tremendous amount of um, rain. In order to, of course, I carry that stuff as well. Carry that with you. That's important. But a rainy day with that gear and a rainy day with an open heart it's not do it. And I know anyway, so that's what I'll say about that. Okay. So the open heart will will keep you moving forward during the darkest of times. Is that is that kind of the, the takeaway here? Is that if you if you keep your heart open and appreciate what's happening as it's happening, that that will see you through? Is that is that the idea? That's okay. We've got a little delay here, but I think we're okay. okay. Yeah, we have there a little we go. bit of delay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. I was, I was Did you hear my question? I heard part of it. Okay. I, I think what happens is um, if we were speaking about long trails, uh -huh. okay, we're speaking about being out there for a couple of weeks. Or a couple months. It's not essential that you have this open heart that I'm talking about. But it will, I definitely think that you'll find your way under that. And it's, Difficult for people to hear that because they want to know specifically, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. You know, the piece of plastic, the tent, the backpack, the whatever. And none of you will make it. I'm serious. None of you are going to make it. I, I, I will tell you right now, the piece of plastic that I use for a piece of gear or a, or a backpack, or for a tent, or a tarp, or whatever, you're not going to make it. I'm sorry. Go ahead and buy it. Go ahead and buy that stuff. That's cool. It's all available for you online. 
Go ahead. Buy all that stuff. You won't make it. Because that's not where we came here to be on this world. Where you came here to be was not about someone who could do it more efficient, but someone who could maybe do it more effective. Not about someone who could check a box, but maybe someone who could uncheck a box. My backpacking to me, it's an art sort of thing. You're all gonna figure that out as well. So, you know, if I could give you a package that would help you to hike from this point to this point, I would tell you, I'm not withholding any information. I have a lot of information. but I don't believe any of it. So I want to give you the information that I have. That's a little bit different from that. And I don't know, that's the way I look at it. I could be wrong. It's just an opinion. Absolutely. Wrong, yeah, but, you're, you're speaking but, from your experience, yeah. Yeah, you you uh, you've given the most unique answer to that question ever on the podcast, and I appreciate that. That you know, it's it's not a gear list. It's not a it's not a it's not a checklist. Uh, you your advice is you need to go with an open heart. You need to go with a, a certain perspective, otherwise you're not going to make it. Listen, the APT requires you to carry three to four gallons of water at a time. So, what do you care about gear at this point? Where you want to go ultra light? I only had seven pounds on my back, or seventeen thousand pounds on my, or seventeen hundred, or seventeen pounds on my back. Four gallons of water. What do you think that does to your ultra light plan? I hiked it. I hiked the triple crown. All right. Hey, Rue, um, uh, I've got a, a, another segment here. It's going to help us talk a little bit about gear a little bit further here. I've, it's called the hiking pole. And it's not P-O-L-E like a, a pole in your hand. It's a hiking pole like a survey, P-O-L-L. And I've got seven questions that I'm going to ask you. Your answers are going to help me rank you on a, uh, on a, a craziness scale with uh, one being absolutely bonkers and 100 being absolutely sane. So are you ready for these seven questions? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. First one, trekking poles or no trekking poles? Wait, these are yes or no questions or? Yeah, basically. Yeah. You, you just pick one oh, side or the okay. other. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. For what? Uh, wait. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so on a long trail, trekking yeah, poles, do you, do you use trekking poles or no trekking poles? Oh, let's go with yes. I don't, but let's go with yes. Okay. Yeah. You you don't, but you're going with yes. I think it's the best way to go. Okay. All right. Next question. Boots or trail runners or something else? Whatever you like, um, mostly trail runners. Okay. Yeah. Tent, tarp. Or hammock, or yeah, cowboy, all, or, or cowboy camping. Yeah, all of them. All of them. Okay. I mean, you realize we're talking about the American Perimeter Trail, right? Yes, it's a long trail. So the American Perimeter Trail doesn't really. I mean, it's not really interested in a season which is what the triple crown is. It's like you hike during the summer. Right. Uh, the APT doesn't really, 
Anyways, yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. So all okay. of the above. Got it. Okay. Okay. Next one. This is this one's really important. This is where the biggest point deduction uh, lays. So stove, cold soak, or stoveless? Man, are we talking about the APT or are we talking about something else? Because the APT, you do you do everything all the time. Like you're not um I mean the APT is not you do all you do everything. You have to do every you have to take out of your purse everything. So every answer that you're gonna ask, or I'm sorry, every question is yes. Yes, yes, but it's it, all of them. Okay. Um, I would say, hey folks, man, if you're uh through hiking a long trail, um dang, just just go with the stove. Just go with the stove because you know you can you can be uh lighter or whatever with stuff, but like you're going to be happier if you have a hot meal, especially with your peers and stuff, if you're on a long trail. So, yeah. (laughs) All right, Rue. I wasn't sure where that answer was going to go, but you you settled (laughs) upon a a good answer there. Okay. The APT is yes. Yes. The answer to to the APT is (laughs) everything. Yeah. All the time. Okay. Always. Yeah. All right. So this one, this one is not APT related. This is, this is, this is Rue. This is Rue related. Is life a be- is life better above or below the tree line? Oh yeah. Um, okay. All right. So this is great. Thank you so very much because you're setting me up for some stories or whatever. Um, when I started the APT in 2019, I started going down the Pacific Crest Trail. And um, we had a late snowmelt. Okay, here in the West we had a late snowmelt, which meant the bugs came later than usual. They would normally be like the first week in June or in May, but they came a lot later, and so. Um, what I would say is like when I started out um, on that trek, the bugs were really bad and I didn't have any problem with bugs in camp because I looked on my map and I knew how to do that. Like no bugs here, some bugs here, no bugs here, you know? Uh And I shared that because some other PC tears were like, oh, the bugs were so horrible last night or whatever. And I was like, well, if you camp in this spot or this spot or whatever, you know, you can do that. If you just look at your map and they were like, well, we don't have a map. So, you know, that's kind of that. And I think it's um, above tree line. Yeah. Above okay. tree line. All yeah, right. go for it. Go nice. for it. <laughs> nice. Winter time's difficult, but otherwise, let's go for it. Okay. And then last question, last question of our hiking poll is the long trails, not the American Perimeter Trail, but the long trails, the, the AT, the CDT, the PCT. You think they should be hiked northbound or southbound or flip-flop? Do you have a preference? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess, I guess what happens is with the, with the Appalachian Trail, I have like maybe five to 6,000 miles there. So I went northbound on a through hike, but I don't know what that means for the rest of the tangled stuff and Canal Divide Trail went south. Mm -hmm. But I have a bunch more miles on. I'm not exactly sure. And the Pacific Crest Trail, I went uh, north, but then I have so many miles on it that, like, I'm already a two-time. You know, I'm gonna say, 
I'm going to say go southbound on all of them. Southbound, southbound on all of them. On every single one of them. Yeah. The Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, the Long Trail, the Pinhoti Trail, the Appalachian Trail, the Colorado Trail, the John Muir Trail, the blah, blah, blah. I can just keep on going uh, southbound always. (laughs) Southbound always. All right. Well, why not? I mean, I mean, you're not wrong if you go northbound. No. You ask me the question, so why That's not? That's right. That's go right. <laughs> All right. Let me do some quick math here. Let me tally up the score. We're going to divide by two, multiply by pi, and uh, take the reverse negative of some uh, imaginary numbers, and you come out with a 68. A 68. <laughs> of course, there was an automatic 20-point deduction for being a long trail hiker anyway, because you know that's a, <laughs> you're, you're you're halfway crazy anyway. So. That's a solid score, Rue. I want to thank you very much. That was one of the most entertaining hiking polls we've had yet on the on the podcast. <laughs> thank you so very much for that. All right. Really hey, let's, let's, before we get too far down the trail, let's back up a little bit. I'd love to hear about your background, kind of your origin story, where you grew up, and how you got involved with, with through hiking. Mm, uh, thank you for that. Um, I mean, I grew up in Pennsylvania at the halfway point on the Appalachian Trail. Um, My parents lived, um, they ended up buying a place up on a a mountain that if you walk through the back of their property, it ran into state forest. And then you run into the Appalachian Trail. Um, I think like, as far as, like, I think it's, like, not that interesting. When I mean, people are like, what did you do as a kid or whatever? And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I played in the woods. So then I became this, like, backpacker. And it's like, ah, bullshit. Because a lot of people played in the woods. My brother played in the woods. My brothers did. They didn't become triple crowners. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of just uh, grasping for something. But I mean, I think it was for me, you know, it, my brothers had the same experience and so did my family. But I think for me, it was like I saw a lot of um, the backpackers and through hikers coming through each year. Um, they're on the Appalachian Trail. And I think I think it I think it had an impression on me. I don't, it didn't have any impression on them. Mm-hmm. like to that extent so it doesn't mean like i don't know there's not really it was cool you know i met these two women one time down at a resupply because i lived off the appalachian trail and they were like yeah we're just like playing a lot mm-hmm. in the woods every day and i was probably 15 16 years old i was like that sounds great you know, but, but other than that, I mean, it's like, you don't really, I've had some experience and I'm grateful for that. And other people have, and I hope that through my work, that there's going to be more accessibility and people will be able to experience that, that maybe they wouldn't otherwise. But it wasn't from my parents or like my brothers or anything. I just, you know, this was an interest to me. And I think like the origin story is not that interesting because you have um, plenty of people out there who are not going to have an origin story but are engaged in this way and so let's not detract from them having like whatever they're doing because they have to have some sort of origin story i mean and i know like where i grew up um it was like mostly hunting and um I don't know, people of other color or whatever, they can then come along and they don't have to make up a story. Mm-hmm. They just want to, they just like hiking or backpacking or whatever, like 
Um, let's just do it. You know, we don't have to come up with a reason. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Let me ask, let me ask it a different way. So what I'm getting from you is maybe that your parents didn't do a lot of extensive camping or backpacking with you. And that, that didn't really uh, occur. But what, what I really want to know is when did you first decide, you know what, hiking from Georgia to Maine, uh, 2,200 plus miles living in the dirt for months on end, you know, this would be a good idea. Let, let's do this. Do you remember, do you remember when you thought that or when you came up with that idea and, and what inspired yeah. that? Yeah. Thank you so very much for that. Um, Yeah, I mean, I guess it was probably when I was younger mm-hmm. and um, living off the Appalachian Trail. And there were so many people who um, were coming through there every year. And I would talk to them. I would give them rides when I turned 16. I could mm-hmm. drive and uh, brought people up to the house and trail angel, that sort of thing. Right. Um, You know, but as far as like an adult, you know, on it, you know, I kind of wonder as an adult, if I wasn't being irresponsible in some sort of ways and um, I didn't have kids, I wasn't married, Mm -hmm. so it wasn't that, but You know, I kind of wonder if you know, I don't know. That's a difficult decision to make as people become more responsible to you. Now, I don't have people responsible to me now, so um, I mean, I have like the conference and but I I wonder if There is something possibly dissatisfactory or not being completely understood that draws people into maybe seeing something different or experiencing it. You know, our world is going through so much right now. Mm-hmm. So So, I mean, I wonder if there's going to be a kind of attraction towards that. Sure. Because it's like, I'm not exactly see what I'm finding here. And if it could be a little bit different elsewhere. You know, I I would say this, um, it's not the same thing with ABT because I was alone pretty much the entire time. Uh So this is different, but, you know, in hiking the AP or hiking the Appalachian Trail, um, I definitely came back with a sense of people being much more generous and accepting than what I experienced in the other world. And that was kind of interesting to me. And I think a lot of people who hike the AT can probably speak to that. Um, But that's kind of the way it was for me. And it's just, I've always said that as many people as there are backpacking, that's as many reasons there are to go hike like a long trail. So if you have 2,000 people going to hike the AT, you probably have 2,000 different reasons. And I tend to lean on the part of uh, metaphysical, philosophical understanding of like, how do I go forward in this world and like be the man that that I want to be, you know, that sort of thing. Not like, trying to find myself or right a great philosophical idea because i don't know but that's that's kind of you know and also like the athletic part 
it gets lost too because when I started the APT, like I think my first day was like 32 or 33 miles. I think the next day was 32 or 33 miles. I think the next day after that was 32 or 33 miles. So then like people are like, what's the athletic point of this? But I honestly, like, I don't look at myself as an athlete or like, that's not necessarily, I wasn't trying to do anything faster or whatever. I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a bunch of friends who are engaged in that. I love that stuff. But for me personally, it was more like um, uh, bringing something new into the world. So not the fastest, not the slowest, not the quickest or the dirtiest or whatever. It was about bringing something new in. And uh, I've got like a real opportunity to do this here. So so that's kind of what I've been following. Nice. Rue, you put that you put that beautifully that you know there is no right reason for undertaking a long trail through hike. Uh, if you talk to 2000 people, I think you said you're going to get you possibly could get 2000 different reasons. And I'm not looking for mm. for a you know any commonalities. I'm not looking for the best reason. I'm not looking for the most popular reason. Yeah. I'm looking for different stories about how people get involved. Uh, how it attracted them because uh, the people listening to this podcast, I want I want to show them that you know you do this for all kinds of different reasons and right. uh and right. whatever attracts right. you attracts you and so thank you for pointing that out and explaining that to us that was great thank you all right and we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're going to hear a little bit about uh about Rue's triple crown experience and i really want to hear about the american perimeter trail so stay tuned for that we'll be right back The John Freakin' Muir Pod is sponsored by Outdoor Vitals, the ultralight backpacking gear company whose mission is to improve the mental, physical, and emotional health of mankind by facilitating impactful outdoor experiences. Outdoor Vitals creates innovative technical products with confidence inspiring education that empower outdoor ultralight adventurers. Their focus on performance enables you to live ultralight with gear you can actually be confident with. Whether you're looking for an ultralight sleep system, shelter, or pack, or if you're looking for top quality apparel for the trail, you can find it at Outdoor Vitals. Do yourself a favor. Live ultra light. And welcome back. We are talking to Rue McKenrick. And I'm, I'm excited to hear about some of your Triple Crown experiences. And then I really want to hear about the American Perimeter Trail. So, Rue, in w- which sequence did you do the Triple Crown? Which, which trail was first? Which one was second? Which one was last? Oh, I mean, I guess um, – oh, man. Uh, as far as the Triple Crown, it went AT, Pacific Crest Trail, Connell Divide Trail. There okay. were a, there were a bunch of trails in between there and sure. skittish up, like Colorado, Long Trail, like – um even if it was in the same year right you know what i mean like even if it was the same hiking year um like i hiked the Connell divide trail but i also not as part as a through hike but i hiked the southern part of the appalachian trail but i had already through hiked the appalachian trail i just you know i was um was really enjoying that that point in time and um, it wasn't something that, you know, 20 years ago, um, I don't know. It's something anyone ever spoke about. Um, it was kind of like, you know, I hear folks nowadays that are like, I'm good. I'm setting out to hike the triple crown. I think right. that's great, mm-hmm. but back in the day, I mean, we didn't we didn't know what we were. <laughs> we were kind of ignorant because we didn't know what we were doing, and no one thought of. I mean, when I when I completed the triple crown, like probably, 
I don't know, maybe a couple people had ever done it. I'm not sure. I was probably the youngest at that point in time. I was 27 or something. I think I was probably the youngest person to hike the Triple Crown at that point in time. Um, and and not how, that how it long, matters, but it's right. just... How long ago was it when you when you finished the Triple Crown, when you finished the CDT? What year was that? Yeah, so when I finished the Triple Crown would have been... Um, uh, 16 years ago. Okay. So 2006. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. And there were a lot fewer resources available to triple crown hikers or long trail hikers. I mean, these days, if you want to, if you want to learn about, okay, I, I want to hike one of the long trails, there are so many resources available to you. you can go to YouTube, go to the internet, all kinds of online resources. I mean, how did, how did you prepare back in the day to, to do a long trail? I mean, hey, Doc, listen, you're my friend, but I would kind of disagree with you okay. on that. Um, we, um, so um, back in the day, what would happen is um, if you want to hike something like the Connell Divide Trail, um, you would send a package of like cookies or brownies to this gentleman, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spell it out here because I don't know what his deal is. Um, but you would send him some cookies or brownies and a nice letter, and then he would send you this um, CD, and then you would take that CD and put it into a computer, and it would have the maps on it and then you would have to print out all those maps so if it was a thousand maps which i'm sure it was um you would have to print all those out and then on those um there was like i called them fingers but basically like the Connell divide trail looked like this so on any given map you have this map and you would have, you can go this way, 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 or you can go this way, or you can go over this way. And so there would be some like lines roughly written in there, you mm -hmm. know? And so, like I said, you would send these brownies or cookies, and then you would get this CD-ROM, and then you would print out um, these maps, and then that was it. So that was it. So. Okay. so there were some resources, just not the same, yeah, yeah, not the yeah, same kind totally. as, as today. Right. Got it. Yeah, no, totally. And you needed to have a map and compass and know how to use that right. with these maps. Like if you didn't know how to use any of that, it wasn't, it wasn't going to work for you. So, right. I mean, you quit after the first week or two. Right. Now, if of you the didn't know how to do this, but if you knew how to do this, then then you went on. That's you, went, you went on with your open heart. That's right. <laughs> now, of, of the three American long trails, the, the AT, the CDT, and the PCT, which one was your favorite? Which you do prefer? Well, I'm kind of offended that you left out the American Perimeter Trail. Well, I'm just, talk, I'm just talking about the Triple Crown Trails right now. We're going to get to the American uh, Perimeter Trail. I will stipulate yeah, that that's probably your favorite trail. But of the three... Of the three uh, trails in the Triple Crown, what is your favorite there? Um, he's, he's struggling we, here. He's, we, we, I know. <laughs> Listen. I don't know why I didn't have anything to do with it. Okay. I'm not a proud American or anything like that. You know, just a dude who was born outside of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, most horrific war 
it's ever happened in humankind, it's disgusting. You know, that's where I came from. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you could have asked me this question back in 2004. And I would have had a definitive answer for you. But things changed since then. And so it's very difficult for me to answer because the way in which they've changed affords that. However, I will say this to you. The Pacific Crest Trail is just like, you know, when I hiked it, the year that I hiked it, there were 35. Okay, they give out 8,000 permits now from 35 to 8,000. It happened that quickly. We know why, blah, blah, blah. The Pacific Crest Trail is something that showed us a lot about the beauty of this country. And it'll always be that way. So that's it. Yeah. All right, Ruth. So it sounds like the favorite might be the PCT. I didn't say that. You I'm didn't. Just... You didn't quite say that, but you talked about the PCT. So, well, well my favorite is the APT. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I know that. <laughs> I know that. Okay. All right. Um, were there, was there ever a, ever a time? in those early days on the triple crown, any one of the triple crown trails where you thought to yourself, what have I gotten myself into? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It happened in, uh, so I'd already hiked the Appalachian trail. I'd already hiked the Pacific crest trail. I'd already through hiked the Connell divide trail. I'm probably, I don't know, two or 300 miles, 400 miles, two or 300 miles, I think from, Mm -hmm completing the triple crown. And uh, it definitely came to my mind. Um, Absolutely. So I'm in New Mexico and um, yeah, I've already hiked the three I'm about to finish in like a week or so. And um, definitely had a, uh, what came to my mind was what the hell are you doing out here? Why? What the hell are you doing? The idea of the American Perimeter Trail came uh, pretty quick in succession. So, so yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I was finishing the Pacific or the Triple Crown, and I was like, this means nothing. It means absolutely nothing to me. I don't care about it, it means nothing. What do we do for the greater world? What are you doing here on the planet? Oh, you just want to hike the Triple Crown? Ah. Hmm. What are you gonna do for the world? What are you gonna do for the greater world? And it came to me then. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the, I think it's the the perfect segue, Rue. You know, what are you going to do for the, for the, for the greater, for the greater world? I mean, and your idea was the American perimeter trail. So let's, let's talk about that. What, what is this concept of the American perimeter trail? How long did it take you to come up with, with this idea? Um, it took me only like two seconds to come up with it because it wasn't really something I came up with. It just like hit me. I knew it. I was at a ski resort. I was um, 29, maybe 30 years old or something. I don't, 29, 28 years old. And it hit me. And I had already, I was already a triple crowner at this point in time. So this was like uh, a while back, you know, over a decade ago. And, um, just kind of hit me. It was just like, 
what if you go and hike around the country or something? But th that is not interesting. It's not that interesting, honestly. Do you want to go hike around the perimeter of the United States? Do you want to hike the Triple Crown? Do you want to hike the longest trail no one's ever hiked? To me, it's all very boring. I really don't care. Um, if you did a trail faster than anyone else, I say to you, my hat is off to you. Good for you. If you hiked more trails than someone else, my hat is off to you. You know, I, I have respect for you and that you took on this challenge. But to take on like the biggest trail that never happened, to me, um, I don't care. I will never care. Anyone who gives me credit for my backpacking or my hiking around the perimeter of the United States, 12,000 miles in, I, I really, it's not of interest to me. It's kind of boring. Where I get like really cute is the so when I have this idea about the American perimeter, my mind about let's build this, let's create this. That is what I'm really to. This, I mean, like, can I hype more than anyone else? Yeah, I can. So can anyone else who cares? Can I do it faster? I'll do it faster than you. Just watch out. I'll show you. I know I can. Not because I'm special or anything like that. I can do it fast. I can do that. But the fact of the conservation piece of creating a trail around the United States, but also creates this huge conservation corridor outside of it, that is really turns me on to the, to the bigger motive. So that's just me. I, man, if you, if you want to go faster, harder than anyone else, it's like, do it because I love you guys. I know I'll show you. And go hike something or whatever to see how it is. Poor. I know you guys. I love you guys. That's my deal. I will go faster and harder than all of them. Don't let me down. Well, but it's all a farce just to like create these. Um, to that and I know that but when it's all said and done I don't care if you know about me or ever think about me ever once again in your entire life we have done this and built this because I think it's I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's better than when I came into this world. And I want to leave this world better than when I came in here. So that's it. Well said, and, Rue. Now now how long you've been working on this for, for more than a decade? Is that what it's taken to, to kind of put this together? No. Um so I uh, first had the concept um, about it probably, a, I don't know, like, yeah, um, probably 2010, 2009, 2008. Mm -hmm. And then I s suffered over it for many years because I would often think about it, but I didn't want to do anything about it. And then in 2019, when I actually decided to go do this and be a part of this, 
I didn't plan anything. It wasn't that sort of thing. Um, I'd known about it for 10 years in my mind. No one else knew about it because uh-huh. I didn't talk about it. I had known about it. And then in 2019 or so, this is like, well, I'm going to go. There's no planning needed. There's only amount of courage because I left Bend, Oregon in 2019. Okay. In July of 2019, I put on my backpack and I walked out of Bend, Oregon and I sought out to form the conference and do this hike. I had $400 in my pocket and I had no gear sponsors besides like a feeble one. And I left. And that's it. And did you did you hike the American Perimeter Trail? Yeah. So when you set out on in July of 2019, how long did it take right. you? Right. So we're speaking right now. Mm-hmm. I I technically only have four days of walking to complete the American Perimeter Trail. I'm going to do more this summer, mm-hmm. but that was you know, two and a half or almost three years ago. I'm already over 12,000 miles into this. Mm -hmm. I have no family backing. I have no people that I know. I can't say this enough or to be understood. My gear at that point in time was probably collectively, if you added up the gear that I have, mm-hmm. was probably over 125 years old. Maybe 140, I don't know. And I had $400 in my pocket and I have never stepped back. And that was almost three years ago. So what I'm saying is not that I'm like have an interest in saying that I'm cavalier or that I'm uh, foolhardy or what have you. What I'm telling you is there are people out here that have no resources or have not, don't have a lot, but they have an idea and they have a value. The time has come and they go forth with that. And here I am. But most people won't ever do this because you know it's like everyone gets at me like oh were you just independently wealthy for what was going on they they're not understanding that If you find something of this importance and you value it in your heart and your soul. I haven't slept in a bed in three years. Wow. You know, do you, do you want that? You know, I mean, that's a question. You know, I have a driver's license, but I haven't driven. 12 years. Do you want that? No. I don't, I I had to borrow this shirt to wear tonight. Do you want that? No. I haven't had a haircut 
in years and uh, a neighbor said, I'll give you a haircut for free. You can see it's all jacked up. Do you want that? Do you, do you want to know where your next meal is coming from? Do you want to know any of this? Do you want to talk about gear? You want to talk about that stuff? Or do you want to go create the American Perimeter Trail? You want to go hike something or whatever? Well, let's talk about gear. Let's talk about the heavy, or not the heavy, but the expensive, ridiculous plastic you put on your back from Asia. Let's go ahead and talk about that for an hour or two. You know what it sounds like, Rue? Sounds like a lot of sacrifice. Sounds like you made the decision. This is a, a direction you wanted to go. And, and knowing that, you also knew that there was a lot you're going to have to give up. You know, haircuts, knowing where the next meal is going to come from, knowing uh, that you're not going to sleep on a bed for three years. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot that you, you gave up in this quest to put together and conquer the, the American Perimeter Trail. Well, true or false? You no, know, I guess it's kind of true, but there's some things you left out. Cuddle, sex, girlfriend, pet, hot meals, hot showers. Through hikers aren't willing to give this up, and so they won't. But I was like in the APT during a pandemic. And that's where it was completely different. I didn't, um, if you go on the PCT or the AT or something, you'll see backpackers every day. I left California. Um, I didn't see another backpacker until almost 8,000 miles later in Michigan, I guess. It's not the same thing. It's just the way it is. You're, you're alone in your head for, for long stretches of time. Yeah, I guess so, but I didn't know there was a pandemic. So like... Um, well, that's right. You left July 2019. Yeah, there was no pandemic. Wow. That's like that's like uh, that's like going to sleep and waking up in a in a in a different world. I mean mm. that that's a that was a pretty big change. It wasn't completely that way, but <clears throat> I was um, crossing the Mississippi, and so on the other cross the uh, the other side of the Mississippi is uh, excuse me. There's a place called Natchez, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They have like a big, huge festival there twice a year or whatever. Um, so I crossed there and I'm like, oh man, it's going to be like, I've been by myself since California. So I'm like, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. And I cross into Natchez and there's no one anywhere. There's no cars. There's no one. I walk up to a restaurant. There's a white sign on the door that says, due to COVID-19, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I never even heard of the goddamn thing. So I'm like walking on. I heard a coronavirus, but I don't know what the hell COVID-19 meant. And I walk on to the next one and same kind of like handwritten thing on the door and I call Gigi I call Layla who's the trip coordinator I call her and I'm like what happened and she's like that was uh the weekend in 2020 March last weekend in March right I'm like what is going on she's like Rue we have a we have a serious problem and I was like, uh, what happened? And she's like, we've got a pandemic and a situation here. And I was like, I had never heard of it. 
didn't know what was going on. Um, and so I went from there. Wow, that is wild. That is wild. Now, just looking at the map of the American Perimeter Trail, I've got it pulled up here on the on the browser. I can see that it looks like, uh, for the most part, you follow quite a bit of the Pacific Crest Trail along the west. You follow, it looks like the North Country Trail along the north and the, the Appalachian Trail along the east. What, what is the what is what is the 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 path along the southern part of the United States? Is that an established footpath, or or is that kind of just an, an a, a combination of a lot of different paths? All right, let me step back here for a minute. Sure. So, um, so I never stepped on the Appalachian Trail. Okay, and we're not going to. Um more coordination with the different trail groups there on the Appalachian and we're not going to use the Appalachian trail. Okay. Um, North country trail. We're going to use some of it, Mm -hmm. but not entirely. And the Pacific crest trail, we are using some of it right now, but in the future, it's not going to be on the Pacific Crest Trail at all. Okay. So, um, and then more to your question about like the Southern region, that's our biggest challenge, you know, um, or the way that I'm looking at it. Um, There's no trail across Montana. You know, I dealt with that some. um, And then as far as like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, we have some challenges there. Uh Um, These sorts of things are going to take decades. Or I'm going to be surprised. Or Texas is going to be like two years from now. We're going to be done with it. You know, okay. entirely possible but the Appalachian Trail we're not using the Appalachian Trail the Pacific Crest Trail we're going to use a little bit of it for a while and then we're coming off of that uh, North Country Trail more than likely use a good bit of that even though I didn't use that the whole time and I have different routes all through there uh, the southern route what happens is like Here's the thing is like, if you're from a state that has a trail or long trails, I think that's awesome. I think that's great. And then there's a bunch of states out there that do not have a state trail or a long trail. Um, that are in our, the perimeter of our path. You know, Iowa, they're not on our mission because they're not on the perimeter. You know, they're up here, nothing personal, just how it is. Um, so I think that um, we've had a lot of engagement with folks from Texas, absolutely. Um, because we, we offer a membership to the conference, to the nonprofit. And we've had so many people sign up from Texas because I I can't speak to all of their interests, but essentially we're creating the Texas Trail. It's going to be the Texas Trail and that is the APT route through there. Mm-hmm. But that is their trail because they are going to be the ones who build it. And when we go over to Louisiana, it's going to be the same thing. There's going to be the Louisiana Trail. Though it is part of the American Perimeter Trail, and we call that the APT. They don't have a long trail. 
and now they will. Same with Mississippi. They don't have a long trail. Now they will. And there's enough people in those states and those regions that are like, it's, it seems like very, um, you know, it seems very attractive to them. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're doing. And the so, Pacific Crest Trail will not be the ABT. Okay. It's a placeholder. It's a placeholder. That's it. Got so. it. So, Rue, for our listeners in Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi who are listening in right now and want to want to get more information about how, how to be involved with the creation of their state trails and the American Perimeter Trail, where, where can they go to find more information? Yeah, of course. They can go to our website at www.americanperimetertrail, and there we have contacts and links. We're dedicated to this, guys. I know it looks like the American Perimeter Trail, but that is not, this is how we're rolling it out. And we're doing the best we can to catch up with the website. It's going to be the Arizona Trail and the Texas Trail and the Mississippi Trail, the Louisiana Trail and the Ohio Trail and these sorts of trails. Though we're using like existing trails to go through this, we are coming and you guys are going to get to build your own trail. And that's going to be part of the APT. So. What an endeavor. Sounds very, very challenging. And I no, think. No, I, I, I don't think it is, honestly. I mean, okay. if you look at it that way, I think it's like, yeah, it's like an endeavor on my part. Like, I don't sleep very well nowadays. But, um, you know, like, for someone, for someone in Texas, like we're getting so much buy-in, we're saying, let's build the Texas Trail. It's going to be fifteen hundred miles just to get across that mother. You know, they're into it. They're gonna do it. I have to be there. Like, I'm gonna have to be there on the ground. Like. In Texas, like monitoring some of this and figuring it out, but for the part of the matter, is like they want it. Well, what I was going to say, Rue, is it sounds like quite an endeavor, but you are the man for the challenge. I think you're up for this challenge. Yeah. Well, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> All right. Hey, Rue, you know where we are right now? No. We're at that time of the episode where I turn to you and ask you for your pro tip insight of the week. What bit of trail wisdom can you share with our listeners to make their next outdoor experience even better? Oh, that's easy. You're going to want to go outdoors. You're going to want to go have an experience in the back country, something different from what you're having in the front, front country. And maybe you're going to want to bring some of your family, children, older adults, younger adults. I'm not exactly sure you know, however that works for you. Take a deep breath. The fact of the matter is, I want you to be the same person that you are in the backcountry, but that's not realistic. Be who you want to be in the backcountry. Patient person. And it's going to be difficult. You open your heart 
I'll meet you. I'll meet you there. There's nothing you're going to bring with you. It's going to make any difference. But this open heart. Just come forth with that. We'll bring the rest, I promise you. All right. Well said, Rue. Thank you very much. So there you have it. That's it. This episode is just about in the books. Hope our listeners enjoyed our time with Rue. Want to thank him for joining us this week. Rue, how can our listeners keep up with you on social media and where can they find updates on your latest adventures? Oh man, I don't really even care if you guys do that, but I mean, you can, you can find us on Instagram, the American Perimeter Trail. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, we have a website. Just look for, here's the thing. I, I've got to go out and travel some this uh, summer and we've got a bunch of stuff going on. So check us out at uh, www.americanperimetertrail.org. And we'll see you on the flip side, man. So happy to be a part of this. So thank you. Okay. Remember to check out the pod on social media as well. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you have comments or clips you want to share, you can send it to me at johnfreakingmuir at gmail.com. Rue, I'm also looking to you to share a recommendation for a book, a movie, documentary, some sort of adventure media that will keep our listeners connected to the outdoor uh, experience. We're calling this our adventure media recommendation. What do you have for us? Any recommendations out there? Yeah, I do. Um, so what I would suggest is <laughs> um, National Geographic. Always. Um, they, they print an amazing uh, magazine. I'm never in it. I'm in a bunch of stuff that I could tell you about, but um, why don't you go check that out? Because I can remember, like, even to this day, it encourages me as an adventurer and uh, just wants me to, like, get involved in stuff. So check that out. And I don't know about a movie or um, just check that out. And you guys going to let me know. You know where to find me. So. Okay, very good. <laughs> Hey, before we wrap things up, I've got just one more segment for you called, what have I not asked you that you're dying to tell us about? Okay. Here's the thing, folks. We go on backpacking. If we go on backpacking long enough, life catches up with us. You know, when I was in my 20s, I did a lot of backpacking and traveling and And I started to realize towards the end of my 20s, I was like, well, I met, I, I missed like a death here or a birth here. You know, like my nephew, my nephew was born and it's that and someone else died. And I missed that. And as far as traveling, whether it's backpacking or not, you know. And I guess like at that point in time, we weren't as connected as we are now. So maybe it was a little bit different. If If traveling traveling is not scaring you and there's no deprivation from it, I 
and just stay home. If it feels different, then do that. You and I are equals, so I don't think anything about that. I don't have anything more to say to you more than you already know. If you've been traveling and it doesn't hurt, Go ahead and try out some more. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wrap from the John Freaky Muir studio. Any shout outs to friends and family, Rue? Oh, just to, you know what? The American Perimeter Trail Conference. Hell yeah. Layla, Suzanne, Yvette. Hey, what's up, guys? And then like all of our membership, hey, what's up, guys? But besides that, man, you guys are equal, so it's cool. Just let me know what's going on. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Always remember the trail is the trail. It doesn't care if you want to go downhill. It doesn't care if it's almost dark and you're looking for a campsite. It doesn't even care if you're 300 miles from finishing the Triple Crown and you're wondering what the heck you're doing out there. The trail is the trail. Embrace the suck. Thank you.